Well, last night was a very special occasion at the Smithsonian Institute, and I'd just like to start off with that, Chris, if I may, because watching you and Margot Kidder, <laughs> watching 50 years of history, that was kind of a kick. Mm -hmm. Must have been for you, too. It was fun. It was particularly fun to see that flying sequence from Superman 1, which I haven't looked at in a long time. And um, we, were, we instantly remembered, we were standing there, and instantly remembered how difficult it was to shoot that the you know the lower back pain the Eight. heat the, the 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 seven weeks that it took and see at that time margo i don't think really thought it was going to work and i think she had an attitude of like here i am an actress with film credits from here to there and i'm hanging out on some hydraulics <laughs> with this unknown actor from new york and i mean I, what am i doing you know and I, I i used to have that sort of what am i doing feeling from margo and of course i was really gung-ho and i say like well you know the temperature's you know, six degrees Celsius, and the winds from the south at ten knots, and we're over the Brooklyn Bridge, You're and we're flying training. Oh, and I'm there, and so this used to this used to cause friction between us. Well, maybe that fed a bit of that natural skepticism that Lois has to have yeah. anyway. Oh, absolutely. I mean, I, and I really like if you look if you look at the history of Lois. Lois in the '50s wore these little pillbox hats, and she seemed to embody this kind of suburban dream of you know of, of uh, the white picket fence and waiting for a husband and having the meat and potatoes ready in the oven and all this kind of stuff <laughs> and then you cut to margo in the 70s as uh, as a girl who's, who's ambitious has got a career who's you know living on her own doing just great and and wouldn't the idea of like cats and a mortgage and you know and, and staying home is anathema to her so i think it's nice to watch you could see like yeah. in, in one in one shot last night you could you could see how the characters have evolved over and the word years. is out that your character's evolution because of your portrayal is affecting the dc comics well story yes i guess that's right i mean they have they they, they told me a while ago that they're now writing Superman based on the way I play him in the movie. So now I that's got to be nice, <laughs> huh? <laughs> yeah. Meantime, behind the glass case, eventually we'll go an item of yours that you have kept. Oh, if they ask me, no one's asked me yet, but I've, I have kept one item from, the, from my 10-year history of Superman, and that is I cut out the S off the back of the first cape I ever wore and framed it into my son's bedroom, and if I ask him nicely, he'll part with it. <laughs> and what kid can boast that Superman's S is above... <laughs> his bed on his the bed wall, huh? I don't know. Isn't that <laughs> nice? <laughs> let's, let's assume now as we go into the 21st century that a new generation portraying the characters comes along and now the veteran, Chris Reeve, is going to give this new kid on the block some advice, mm -hmm. some warnings maybe, some uh, experience and hindsight. What might you tell this new stranger to the well, I mean, depend show? I guess the first thing that I would say is don't don't lose the humanity of it. Remember that the basic ingredient of, of Superman is that he's a friend. And I mean, that's just simply, that's the value that's the most important to me, is, is not Superman as a muscle man, but Superman as a friend, a really good neighbor. I mean, somebody, I mean, the, the, this country was founded on the idea of neighbor, of, of, you know, walking five miles to lend your friend a, you know, a cow or, mm -hmm. or a, mm -hmm. you know, a planter or something. And I just, I just think that that's what, in this high-tech urban nightmare landscape that we've got you know of, of people feeling feeling isolated and alone they don't they don't know their neighbors they don't know who's next and they're afraid of other people in the street you know their you know, life is very overwhelming the idea that that early american value of a friend who's there when you need him is the key to the whole character and a friend who has absolute power but is not corrupted absolutely this is very unique yeah. to the superman character and i suppose an imperative for the actor too not to be corrupted by the power of playing superman yeah i've never felt that that was a factor i've never felt i've never felt some sense of power you know you know really coming to me i feel though that that uh that 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 within superman there is the qualities within Superman, forget that he can fly and the muscles and the, all that kind of stuff, but it's the qualities that he exhibits that, that people can identify with. You know, he's, really, he's really a gentleman. That's, that's the main thing. And um, I think to put that into big screen entertainment is, is perhaps an antidote to the Rambo-style action pieces that are the alternative to watch in the summer.